What makes Turnitin.com Turnitin.com is their plagiarism detector and more recently their artificial intelligence detector. So in the previous video, we went over all the different ways that you can leave feedback for students, including quick marks, leaving your own text message or audio message to the student. So now we're going to take a look at the other um, feedback options that you can also take a look at when students submit their Turnitin.com paper. So right below the quick marks and the feedback review, we have this tool over here. And if you hover your mouse on it, it'll say similarity tools. So when you click on similarity tools, you're going to see these different tools that are available here. So right here for our flags, there's no flags detected for the submission, no hidden text, no replaced characters. So we don't have any of that in here. This number here is the indicator as to the percentage that Turnitin.com has uh, flagged this particular assignment um, turned in by a student, how much it matched with either a paper that was submitted already to Turnitin.com, if you, depending on how your settings are, and also web resources. So if we go ahead and click on this number eight, it's going to highlight all the text that it claims has been matched with something outside of this paper. Now, if we take a look here and we really review what it says it's matching, it's very unlikely that this was plagiarized. These are just little, um, not even full sentences, just groups of word. And if you recall, when you did your settings for your Turnitin.com assignment, you could exclude small word matches, meaning if I had set small word matches to maybe 10 words, 10 words that were right next to each other that suddenly now are coming back as plagiarized, it wouldn't even include those when it went through its similarity index. And we can make those changes um, while we're doing feedback as well. So these two here are indicating that it has been plagiarized. And then you will also get a list of where it has found this. So this says here, this has been found on another student paper submitted to turnitin.com. If it was a web resource, it would give you the URL or the website address, and you could actually click on it and go to that website address to see what site it is where all of this information came from. I'm going to go over here and click back on the similarity index over here. And right now, there's only one source in here, but if I would click on all sources, this would show me a list of all the different sources. And it would also give me um, a little bit more information as to where this match came from. I'm gonna go back over to our similarity tools. And this one over here is where you can change the filter and the settings that you want to apply when the plagiarism uh, detection tool is in progress. So you can see here right now, when I had set up my paper, I had already set up for it to exclude quotes, to exclude the bibliography, and exclude sources that are less than five words. So because this match over here was more than five words, it did say it was detected as plagiarism, but that is not the case. If we had changed this to maybe 10, that probably would not appear at all. Um, and then over here, if you don't want to do it by words, but you want to do it by percentage, if you don't want um, feedback, the plagiarism detection to detect and bring to your attention anything that comes below, let's say 10%, you can set that to a percent, and then I would exclude that for this paper and all the other papers. Multicolor highlighting um, is just going to highlight different segments of the paper based on what source it's saying that the work came from. So these are a few of your filter uh, settings over here. If you had already set up your settings the way you wanted it when you created the assignment, you really shouldn't have to change anything here, but it's just something to be aware of that's here. So we're going to close out the similarity index tools, and now we're going to take a look at one of the other newer tools to Turnitin.com. And in this case, for this paper, there is not going to be any AI detection. Um, and the reason that this is, and this is something important to know, Turnitin.com, when they use they, their artificial intelligence detection service as of this day's date, which is summer 2023, 
the submitted paper to turnitin.com has to be more than 300 words. It will not use, be able to detect the artificial intelligence if this is something that has been submitted and is less than 300 words. And you can see here at the bottom of my paper, it tells me the word count in this paper is 194, which is why it is saying AI writing detection is not available for this particular paper. An example of what the artificial intelligence detection would look like if a paper had been submitted and had um, a detectable amount of artificial intelligence used to write the paper. This is an example here. So in this case, that artificial intelligence option would have had a number 31%. And when you would have clicked on that number, very similar to the similarity index, it would give you, um, it would highlight the areas that it says were generated by artificial intelligence. And it will also give you some resources if you wanted to get some more information about how Turnitin.com has implemented this service. Just keep in mind, it's not perfect. Um, artificial intelligence is constantly evolving. And again, right now for Turnitin.com, the paper must be over 300 words for it to even apply the artificial intelligence um, detection service. So I hope this gave you a good in overview of the plagiarism aspect of Turnitin.com as well as the artificial intelligence.